The trailer opens with this metronome, the same device that psychic medium Elise Rainier used to hypnotize Josh Lambert in the first Insidious so that he could go into the Further and rescue his son. The reappearance of it here suggests that he'll be going back into the Further to settle some unfinished business. There's also a shot of someone using a digital metronome propped up on the side of a bed. Dalton used to astral project in his sleep before being hypnotized to forget about his ability at the end of Insidious Chapter 2. I cringe for this USB port, but I would guess that this is Dalton trying to rediscover the mysteries of his past. We're shown flashes of the family's past in Insidious 1 and 2 before being taken forward to 10 years with Dalton set to head off to college to learn whose funeral the family is attending, what happens to Josh over the years, and what might be hidden in each Insidious logo, stick around to the end of this video. Welcome to Things You Missed Trailer Edition. Today I'm looking at the first trailer for Insidious The Red Door. Since the trailer glosses through things pretty quickly, I thought it would be a good idea to go back shot by shot and analyze what we're supposed to take away from the trailer. Insidious The Red Door is the long-awaited follow-up to the Lambert family story. The last two movies were prequels, exploring the past of Elise, so we never got to see what happens after Ghost Elise discovered the red-faced demon haunting a new family. But we are definitely going to. Let's cut in to the things you missed. At the end of the second movie, Josh and Dalton are hypnotized to erase their abilities to astral project into the further because of the danger associated with it. I've been saying for like 10 years now that this was not a good idea, because Josh forgot his ability when he was a kid, and this left him very ill-prepared when his son demonstrated the ability years later. They would have been better off learning to harness their abilities like Elise. Sure enough, another 10 years go by, meaning that the Red Door is set in 2020. It seems like a lot of movies just like to exist in a universe where COVID never happened for some reason. It's weird, because I can't really think of any movies set in say like 1940s Germany that don't acknowledge the Holocaust. Maybe the pain from COVID is just too fresh for screenwriters to want to think about it. Josh is seen doing a memory exercise where he flips over photos of his family members. He seems to be in a new house and it's good to see that he got a new armchair rather than keeping that one that Elise died on. It seems that he's beginning to see ghosts again and his nightmares have come back. As a kid, he would astral project in his sleep, which he perceived as a series of nightmares. The shot where he wakes up is deliberately framed so we don't see the other side of his bed. And in all of the shots where he's at home, he's alone, leading me to believe that he and Renee may not be together anymore. Add that to the fact that he's got all these photos of her around the house, and it makes it look like he misses her. Renee also suggests that he drive Dalton to college to reconnect, which may suggest that they've been apart. When driving Dalton to college, he's holding something, possibly some kind of cigar, which would also be a clue about his issues. Maybe I'm totally over-speculating, but it's possible that his memory issues are connected to the relationship issues with his family. The only time he and Renee are seen together is at this funeral. And speaking of which, who died? The kids are grown up in this shot, so this isn't Elise's funeral, it's 10 years later. There are four characters who don't appear in the trailer, the paranormal investigators Spex and Tucker, Elise's ghost hunter colleague Carl, and Josh's mom Lorraine. I'm guessing that they're attending Lorraine's funeral, since they're probably not in contact with Spex, Tucker, and Carl, especially if they potentially don't remember much of what took place in 2010. Her death would be significant, because assuming Josh and Dalton lost their memories, that would leave Renee as the only one who truly remembers everything that went on in 2010, and she'll be dealing with the difficult questions of whether or not to remind them of those painful memories. There's so much you don't know. When I was too scared to tell you the truth. Okay, so Dalton is going to college for art school. You're old now. No, Dalton, you're old now. Interestingly, in the trailer, he says he was in a coma when he was 10. In the script of Insidious, it suggests that he was eight, but as we know, ages used in scripts are not canon. He does look more like he was eight in the original, and it would make sense if he was going to college for the first time at 18. But it could also make sense that he was 10, and he started at a local community college for the first two years, and now, 10 years later, he's 20 years old and transferring away to university to study art. Josh has some kind of artwork in his house next to his pictures of Renee, which I'm guessing is something that Dalton drew at some point. It's fitting that he would become an artist because he loved to draw as a kid. In fact, his drawings of what he saw in the further are what caused his parents to realize that his ability to astral project was real. His art teacher talks about balancing light and dark in his compositions. And there's a double meaning here, because light and dark are terms sometimes used in this franchise to describe the real world, the light, and the further, the dark. And we see the beginnings of him drawing the red door. This suggests that it's happening again. Some of the pictures he drew as a kid were pictures of the red doors that connect certain areas in the further. The art teacher tells him to think deep into your memory 
and let's see what light can find. So I would surmise that his investigation into this missing area of his memory causes his astral projection ability to resurface and causes the red-faced demon to have another opportunity to possess Dalton's body, just as he had 10 years before. In one shot, we see Redface reach out and grab Dalton's hand, leaving a big gash with no blood, very similar to the injury that Elise sustained in the 1980s when investigating Josh's paranormal issues with the Bride in Black. Speaking of whom, when I first saw the trailer, I was confused because these are new photos that we haven't seen before. We know the Bride in Black appears in the background of photos taken of his targets. However, I believe these are just supposed to be old photos of Josh that weren't shown in the previous movies. In Insidious 1, the photos are used to explain to him what happened in his childhood, so that's probably what's going on here again. I don't think the bride is back. It would be pretty disappointing if he came back because if that were the case, then what would be the point of the second movie? I do think that there are going to be new photographs that feature a different lurking entity, however. Dalton meets a girl at college and we see them take a selfie together, but the trailer doesn't show the result of that photo. However, we do see familiar things starting to happen, like a red handprint appearing on Dalton's bed. While Dalton was in a coma in 2010, the family discovered something similar on his bedsheet before all hell broke loose. We also see Redface putting on his favorite record by Tiny Tim and what appears to be Josh and Dalton and approaching the red door and entering Redface's lair. In Insidious, as the ghosts around the house started to smell Dalton's empty vessel, they got closer and started appearing more frequently in the real world. One of them sticks a hand out of a drawer as Spex is closing it. In the new trailer, we see something similar, a hand protruding out of a wall. Like the other films, there'll probably be an array of ghosts outside of the main threat, some good, some neutral, some evil. In this shot, Dalton discovers someone wrapped in plastic, and if we bring up the lights, there's another creepy looking figure in the distance. There's also a shot of someone aiming a flashlight towards the demon, and you can see another entity moving around in the background. We also see a new entity crawling out from under a bed. It looks kind of like this creature, who was shot for Insidious The Last Key, but ultimately never featured in the movie. Closer to the end of the trailer, Dalton gets dragged away with a chain on his foot, the same way he was confined by Redface in Insidious 1. Additionally, there's this part, where the adult Dalton, adulton if you will, sees the scene from the end of Insidious Chapter 2 of his dad, who is possessed at the time, nearly about to strike him down with the hammer. Remember, one of the traits of the further is that it's not tied to time in the same way that our world is. It can show you different events from different points in time. Since Dalton doesn't remember the events of Insidious Chapter 2, he probably thinks this is real. We also see one of his paintings as a man with a hammer standing in front of a red door, maybe a result of his foggy memories of the second film. We also see the return of the can phone. In Insidious 2, this is how Dalton and Foster communicated when they were supposed to be in bed, but it was later compromised by the ghosts in the further trying to communicate with Dalton. He also used it to his advantage in the end as a way to find his way out of the further after locating his dad. As for Elise, it seems she's getting the old Randy Meeks treatment this time around. After her death in the first Insidious, she helped out as a ghost in Insidious Chapter 2, claiming that she moved on to see a better place, which is implied to be the equivalent of heaven, but came back when she realized that the Lambert family was still in trouble. I've seen that better place, but I came back here because I heard you calling, and I think I can help. Chapter 2 ends with her as a ghost, joining Specs and Tucker on their investigations, although it appears that only little kids can see her. But after 10 years, you have to figure that she would have moved on to that better place permanently, because there's no joy in staying in the further. Plus, she would probably want to move on and be with her husband again. It's not clear if a ghost can come back to the further after entering that better place beyond the further. At the end of the trailer, we see the insidious The Red Door logo. This is actually something I've been waiting for too, because I've spent probably too much time thinking about the Insidious logos. Starting with the second movie, the letters SI are colored red, and I was always curious if there was some meaning there. In the third one, the three eyes are red, which seems to make sense. It's the third chapter, and the three eyes represent the Roman numeral three. Then, the last key logo actually looks different in the trailer than it does on the poster, which made me question if there is any pattern to this at all. So the new logo has the SI colored red once again, which I think may be an intentional callback to the second film. This is the true follow-up to the Lambert family story that we've been waiting for, so its logo will follow that of the second movie. If that's the case, it's a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. For a while, I thought there was going to be some secret message there, but I think that's all it is. Before the new Insidious comes out this July, you need to get fully caught up on your Insidious lore. So check out that playlist on the left. I've got a ton of Insidious content planned before then, so make sure you don't miss out on that by subscribing to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ringing the death bell for all notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.